so 2D lights have been around for a while, but they recently got they got a pretty cool demo published by Unity. It's the Lost Creep demo. And if you haven't tried already, you should give it a try. I played around with it and 2D lights are awesome. And I'm gonna show you every step I took to achieve something similar to this, at least to help you get started with 2D lights for your game. And this small project is available on my Patreon page, in case you are interested. So with that being said, let's see how we can do this. And in order for you to use 2D lights, you are going to need at least Unity version 2019.2. From there, you can create an empty project with Unity Hub and select Universal Render Pipeline Template. If you already have an existing project, you need to convert it to the Universal Render Pipeline, which is super easy. For example, this is even a 3D project that I pick. It's not even 2D. And now all we gotta do is install the Universal Render Pipeline in the Packages Manager. Once it's done, you can create a pipeline asset with a right click. And now in Project Settings, we simply need to assign the pipeline right here in Graphics. We need to create a 2D render as well. That we are going to assign to the Universal Render Pipeline. Now you may need to upgrade your scene and your project to the 2D renderer. You can do it here in Edit, Render Pipeline and then in 2D Renderer. This will change the shaders of the sprites from Sprite Lit to Sprite Lit Default, among other things as well. And that's it, we are ready to use 2D lights. So I prepared a few sprites to create this scene to demonstrate a few things that I think that are worth mentioning. And as you can see, everything is black. And that's a good thing actually, because it means the 2D renderer and the 2D light setup are working properly. And the first thing we need is something like a sunlight, more specifically a global light. As you can see, we have freeform lights, bright lights, parametric lights, point light, and then the global light. And the global light will affect everything. But in this case, it's not affecting the background or the foreground because we can choose which layers we want to illuminate. And I'm going to include the background and the foreground that I created for those respective sprites. And the global light is pretty cool because you can create day and night cycles with this. Or you can give different feelings to the player by using different colors, like blue for a cold feeling or orange for a warm summer feeling, for example. It's pretty cool and we need a global light. So let's see another example. For instance, I have this fire here, which you can learn how to create with this tutorial that I made a while back. The link's in the description. And the fire is lit, but it isn't affecting the scene. So we can improve this with a 2D point light. And we have a few settings here. Let's start by increasing the outer radius to around 3 or maybe even more. It's also possible to clip the light and only use it in a 180 degrees angle. For example, I'm just going to increase the outer radius to 6 after all and the inner radius to 0.5 and uh, now let's give it some color, something orange, more or less like this. We can also play with the fall off, basically the fade of the light. And we can also increase the intensity as well. And it's starting to look like something. You can also play with the volume and with the other settings as well. Anyway, these ones are the most important ones. What I want to focus on is the use of normal maps. This is what makes the lights and the scene pretty cool. So we can now add normal maps to any sprite and the light will interact with it. We can, for example, use a very simple site to quickly create normals. You can go to 
normal maps online, for example. But I really recommend if you can, try using a better software like Substance Painter. And I'm gonna create normal maps for the tree, for the rock, and for the ground. And now back to Unity, when I imported them, I specifically said those were 2D sprites. If we press in the Sprite Editor button, it says we need to install the 2D Sprite package from the Package Manager, which is fairly easy. And once it's done, now the Sprite Editor opens up, and I'm gonna dock it down here. And if we go to this drop down menu, we can select secondary textures. And I'm gonna add one and select normal map for the name. And then select the tree normal map sprite that we just created in the site. Now if you look closely to the trees, we can see the change taking effect once we press apply. And if I move the 2D light around, we can have a better perception of how the normal maps are being affected by the light, which is pretty cool. And I'm also going to do the same and apply the normal maps to the rocks and to the ground too. Ok, but as you can see, this is still a little bit too static, the light should be more dynamic. So I'm going to create an animation that will animate several parameters, like the outer and the inner radius, for example. And as well as the intensity too, you know, we can animate a few parameters just to make things a little bit more random. And I'm also going to animate the distance which is basically moving the light in the Z axis. And that's it, we end up with the more dynamic light, a little bit more correct for a campfire. It could be moving more, but you get the idea. Now, another cool light type is the freeform light. And we can use this type of light for many, many things. For example, to create a moonlight shaft. We can press Edit Shape to do so. And we can create something like this, like a shaft from the moon. It's a full moon night, for example. And we can add a light blue, maybe decrease the intensity and put it around here. Something like this looks interesting. We can add another one around here, and maybe one more, but with a very low intensity. It adds a nice touch and it makes the scene more atmospheric and immersive as well. And since it's full moon, I'm going to add some light to the top of the trees because they are a bit too dark. Just like this, very low intensity point lights, adds a nice touch. I could be using the freeform lights if I wanted to, but these ones are quicker. And they add a nice little touch. Another cool light to mention is the sprite light. For example, I'm going to create this texture in Photoshop to create some moonlight reflection on the ground. Nothing too fancy, just some very low opacity light. And I'm going to export it without the black background and save it as a PNG and import it to Unity. Now I can drag and drop to the sprite light. and adjust the intensity as well and make it just a little bit blue. And these lights can also be very versatile. If you have sprites, you can illuminate them. It's really cool. Now, a few more things that we can add to this scene is for example, some stars in the background. We can create a particle system. I'm going to assign a point of light texture like this one, made in Photoshop, very simple. And the shape is going to be a box. Push it up here, increase the X, increase the Y to fit the sky. 
and decrease the start size to a very low value like 0 0.05 and 0 0.2. The start color is also going to be very low in terms of opacity. And start lifetime between 5 and 10. Stars don't shut down, but whatever. And start speed is going to be 0. And we can add a nice fade. And that's it. We have some nice stars. To make this scene even more interesting, we can add a volume, a global volume. We can create a new profile and add a bloom, for example. Increase a little bit the intensity, play around with the threshold and get a nice feeling, you know? And if you don't see anything, and if you don't see anything in your game window, that's because you need to go to the camera and turn on post-processing. And that's, and that's it, now you can see the bloom affecting the game window. We can also add a vignette. Just to darken a little bit the corners of the game window, it adds a nice touch. And finally, the only thing we are missing now is the full moon which I'm going to reuse this point light 2D, drag it up here, and, and I'm going to make sure that it also affects the background layer, decrease the outer radius to 1.2, and pick a blue light, a very light blue. In the falloff intensity I'm gonna set a value of 0 0.8 to create a nice circle, and I'm gonna move down here a little bit so we can see in the game window and now I can increase the intensity to around 2.4 and also increase the volume to 0 0.18, 0 0.2 should be fine to create a nice circle that looks like the moon you could also use the sprite light with a moon image if you want as well there's many many possibilities and basically I went from this pretty simple scene, not so alive, and in a matter of 10-15 minutes I created this one which is more vivid, attractive and with more life, basically. So yeah, 2D lights are awesome for 2D games, they bring their quality a step higher and are fairly easy to use. Which is what I have done with my game, which by the way there will be a big update in the game dev log sooner or later but as you can see it's starting to get really cool and uh, that's it for this video guys so this mini project is available in my patreon if you want to support me you will get access to this to some visual effects to some shaders as well there's a lot of things there so you can check it out and use it for your projects if you want and i want to thank every patreon that supports me and I want to say a special thank you to the Super Mega Patrons, which are AI Yetang, Akambi Angelok, Alejandro, ForteHeroGames.com, Goblin Plague, James Finley, Joshua Yu, Juan Mendiola, Mark Brittigam, Niai Andri Manjanto, Ramiel, Stephen Melton, Travis McCollum, Warden Studios, Yayoni, and Max Nazarenko and I'm very sorry if I pronounced any of your names wrong you guys are really awesome and your support is really very much appreciated so thank you very much and thank you everyone for watching and I hope to see you in the next video